Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. It's time for the Battle of South Mountain. It's the last stop before we get to Antietam, which is going to be crazy. Uh, but for now, we are here on Union Legendary Mode on Ultimate General Civil War. And if you have not seen all of the videos up to this point in the series, there's a link in the description below that will take you back to Episode 1. Also, to let everyone be aware, I've got a new poll question up over on Patreon. Uh, and uh, if you are a patron, even at $1 a month, uh, which right now I believe there are seven of you. Uh, that poll question is open for you. And if you have not gotten involved, this is a great opportunity to do that. Click on the link in the uh, description under the video and you can go and see how to do that. That's going to help determine what the next series, uh, what game it will be. In the meantime, it's time to dive into South Mountain. So I uh, just want to let you know a little bit about what's going on here with my army. And then we'll talk some about the historical battle as we go along. I get to take 20 brigades, so this is a fairly large force. Now, I'm uh, at nearly 30,000 and 72 guns compared to only 22,583 guns. Now that we have developed that secret of creating a bunch of 500-man brigades to drive down the average number of un uh, men in the enemy units for these minor battles, uh, that certainly makes things a lot easier. So I've maxed out all of mine to 2,000. And we're going to dive in. Uh, the 72 guns that I've taken are all long-range rifled artillery because I'm going to be moving and uh, I, I want to hold them back and try to take out as much of his artillery and take out as much of his men in the open of, as I can. I can see the benefit to having uh, smooth bores on this one, especially if you can draw him into an attack at the river. But I feel like I've got a decent enough advantage in numbers on manpower that I can stick to uh, the rifled artillery on this one. So basically, uh, you get everybody at the start on this one. And so what I want to do is I want to just kind of hold the line here at the river and then send a flanking force around and try to hit him and eventually make my way into these woods and just drive into the objective from this side and just try to keep him in the open as much as I possibly can. So that's the plan. And, of course, we'll see how that works out in reality. I am going to send a couple of um, some of my two-star units, but for the most part, I'm going to keep a lot of the force over this way and hopefully just draw him out there. Um, so I'm going to figure this out. I'll get everybody in position, and then we'll begin. Okay, so my strategy is this. I'm going to advance first with... Uh, this front line here right up to the edge where maybe I can hopefully draw him in. Uh, best case scenario is I sit in these woods and I draw some of his army in and they get into the water and I hit him there. That may or may not work uh, depending on how things go. I'm also going to leave my artillery over here. Uh, we're going to also then send these five brigades over and eventually come up into these woods and attack him from this side. Hopefully that works out. We will see in reality if that's how it works. Um, not entirely sure. What I've done is I've gone every other unit here with my uh, putting the two star ones in the center surrounded by the one star. So we kind of have them spaced out a little bit with two additional units in reserve, uh, actually three, just in case um, I need them. But we'll see how that works out in reality. Now, historically, this battle was a significant battle. I mean, in terms of the numbers involved, you got about 28,000. Union troops, about uh, eighteen to 20,000 Confederates uh, on, in this one. If you think about the Battle of Crampton's Gap, which we just fought as being on the left flank of the Union Army, uh, simultaneous to that was this battle at South Mountain on the right side. Um, and this was all just a couple of days before the Battle of Antietam, and it was all kind of uh, because of what happened with, uh, if you know the history of the Antietam campaign, you know that uh, during this campaign, Lee had made the decision to divide his army in half. And the, uh, the Corps under Stonewall Jackson was tasked with taking the Union garrison at Harper's Ferry, kind of securing Lee's rear so that that would free him up to uh, move against some other places in Maryland. And, of course, there's that famous uh, circumstance where uh, Lee's orders, which were given to his commanders, uh, a copy of those orders were lost, um, wrapped around some cigars, and they were found by the, by the Union Army, and that caused McClellan to act. 
uh, because he believed he had an opportunity to catch Lee with his forces divided. Of course, Lee finds out that this is the case and quickly responds himself and moves to consolidate his forces. He occupies these two gaps, one at Crampton's Gap, one at um, South Mountain, and the battles ensued. This one, of course, was significantly larger than the battle that happened at Crampton's Gap because there were so many more troops involved. Um, over 5,000 casualties combined between the two armies. So in terms of the casualties involved, we're talking about a, a bloodier battle than uh, even like first bull run, for example. Uh, but of course, this was all in the shadow of uh, the Battle of Antietam, which was to come a couple of days later during this campaign. And that became the bloodiest single day in American history. So uh, not a lot of people know about South Mountain. Now, this is pretty close to the Antietam battlefield. It's close enough that um, if you go to the Antietam battlefield and you go to the sunken lane where they have this tower that you can climb up, uh, the steps to the top of, it's not real tall, uh, you can see South Mountain really easily from there. Uh, and it shows you where all the different landmarks are and, and it tells you where South Mountain is. Uh, so you can really kind of get a glimpse of just how close they were. So let's see if we can drive McCray off. I need to get in a little closer here and catch these guys. I've got Anderson right there in the water. I don't like Carol's Marauders being in the open like this, but you know, that's just the way it is right now. Okay, so so far so good. We've got Anderson right where we want him. I'm actually going to move some of these guns up. Not all of them at once, though. All right, let's go ahead and tie out some skirmishers here. I'm going to completely avoid these guys if possible. All right. I'm going to have to walk around and try to get right between this water here. This is a late afternoon, early evening battle. It's uh, already 6 o'clock in the evening, so... I don't anticipate it's going to give me a lot of leeway as far as the timer goes. So I'm expecting I'm probably going to pretty much have to have this thing wrapped up on time. I love how he just parked right there on the water. I'm going to sit Zook right here, just to keep him occupied a little bit. Kemper just going to sit there in the open and just let me shoot at him, I guess. We've got a Kemper of my own here. I'm going to get some more skirmishers over here just to keep him occupied a little bit while I send the rest of my force around. Um, two hours to go. So far, 600 casualties for me. Um, 700 for him, so pretty even, actually. Which is a little disappointing. There's not a lot of cover here for Zook. Looks like he's backing up. That's actually perfect if that's what he's going to do. So the plan is to just advance through these woods. The objective's right there at the edge of the woods. That way I avoid all of this open ground altogether. This is a battle I'm pretty content to get out of with minimal engagement. Because this is one you can end up losing a lot of men really fast if it goes badly. And I'd rather avoid that and keep my army largely intact going into Antietam if I can. Let's see if we can hit this battery here. So I think I'll keep them there because what I'm worried is going to happen is that he's going to move this other brigade up. And Zook, I'm pretty content to let him kind of be my cannon fodder and keep the attention of these three brigades. 
that's a significant amount of his troops that I can keep occupied while I send my main force this way. Of course, my concern is the condition of these guys by the time they get into position. I'm not going to have a lot of time to let them rest up. He's starting to shift uh, some of his units over this way, I, I see. Let's see if we can draw him out a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. Right, back up, back up, back up, back up. All right, Zook, you're doing your thing. You're keeping him occupied. That's all I can ask of you here. Let's get these skirmishers. Yeah, he's drawing a lot of fire over here. I'm really happy about that. I'm not happy about the fact he's about to break, but... All right, let's 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 go ahead and send Peckham up to help him out a little bit. Gotta get them across this water quickly. Ooh, Anderson's right there. So he's gonna get a volley in on me when I'm in the water. Yeah, that wasn't wasn't such a great thing. But this is all a distraction right here, so that's fine. I'm keeping him occupied. Alright, let's start hitting these guys that are out in the open. I'm gonna shift these other two batteries this way. See if maybe we can draw some more attention over here. Oh, Zook, do you think you fell back far enough? It's taken the better part of this battle to get this done, but... Oh, Wolverine's getting flanked because of this battery. Okay. Two can play at that game. How about you start taking fire from the rear? On your battery. Looks like he's finally figuring out what, what's happening here. These guys are in pretty poor condition at this point.
we're going to be right on the edge of this objective with an hour to go. Not the best day for Zook. Now, he's he's got muskets, so um, I wasn't expecting much out of him. That's kind of why I put him there as a cannon fodder, knowing that he wasn't really going to do much. And I wasn't too worried about losing those troops. All right, these guys got to get out of there. They just took a couple of shots to the face from some canister fire. Just about destroyed French's battery. Once that's done, let's start firing on these guys in the open again. A lot of my casualties in this battle, actually about a third of my casualties in this battle have been in this one unit of Zooks. pull them out. Perfect. That actually shifts these guys this way. I'm going to keep keys out that way just to kind of secure things on my left flank. And now we'll go ahead and advance on the objective. And it looks like we're going to pretty much take it without a fight on this side. Now that may change now that I'm here. He may decide he wants it back. I know he's still got some skirmishers out here somewhere. No, no, no. We want skirmishers. Oh, skirmishers are still broken off somewhere. Looks like he's going to be content to just let me have it. Now here's where I'm torn. Do I advance and catch this guy in the crossfire? Or do I just sit tight and be happy that I don't lose more men? I think I'm going to sit tight on this one. Let him get exhausted, and then I'm going to go ahead and charge into him, because these are 1842, so they're good at melee combat. They're much better for me than trying to shoot it out with him. Now I'm going to run Peckham over here. Try to get a volley into him. That's the one thing these 1842s are good for. If this one's going to end as soon as the contested timer ticks down or not. We're going to find out here in a second. No, nope, guess not. I think it'll probably end when the battle timer ticks down, though. And that'll actually be good news for me.
Now we're going to start actually being able to cause some decent casualties here. Because we've got them all out in the open. That's not to say I want this to continue <laughs> for too long. But... It's actually working out pretty nicely right now. Yeah, it ended right away. Okay, so we lost about 3,000 men, inflicted 4,200 casualties, but I'm pretty content with that considering I still had the majority of my force made up of relatively inexperienced units. And that was really a battle. I just wanted to get in and uh, get the job done and get out so we can get ready for Antietam because Antietam is going to be a beast. Uh, so it looks like we rescued a bunch of random weapons here, captured very few, managed to capture one 10-pound parrot. I uh, got a couple of promotions to Brigadier General. Uh, let's look at the, the big performers of the day, our 20-pound parrots. Uh, none of my actual infantry <laughs> brigades inflicted more than 365 casualties. Uh, but that was to be expected because we really didn't engage all that much in too many firefights. So the artillery did a lot of the damage in that one for me. But I'm pretty content with that. It's always good to get out of South Mountain with uh, less than 3,000 casualties no matter the, the outcome. And so that gives me a morale boost of 4 and I'm probably not going to spend any more of those points. I spent 18 points on 7,500 uh, 1855s, so, and we're going to go into economy again here, trying yeah, sure. to get a little bit more of a discount. So I've got a pretty substantial uh, force available to me. The issue, of course, is going to be cost, but I think we can probably make something good happen here. I've got about 40,000 men in my army, another 35,000 that I can take. It's going to give me about 75,000 that I can take into Antietam. He, this is going to be a tough one because he's going to have a pretty decent sized force. 55,000 right now, and that's before any scaling takes place. So I'm going to have to play with this one quite a bit to get it all figured out how I want to build my army, how I want to balance everything, uh, and figure out how best to do this uh, and just kind of look it over. So let me know your thoughts about the Battle of Antietam and how you think I should play that. Uh, any strategies, any tips that you found are really helpful for yourself. Let me know your thoughts on South Mountain. And as I mentioned before, go out, go over and check out that poll question over on Patreon. And uh, we will see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.